right, and we're back. So I ran out of time. I thought I could tackle all of them and ask a thousand questions, and do everything in 30 minutes, and we don't have the time. So what we're going to do now is we are going to uh, just tackle one. So I'm going to walk through my thought process again. I'll ask some questions along the way. Um, but we're actually going to do linear search in both languages using that pseudocode mentality. We're going to run through the whole Git workflow one more time, and uh, and then we'll get into test driven development. So again, I've got linear search here. We've solved this twice, so I'm pretty sure this will be reviewed for most people. Uh, but let's take a look at what it is. So linear search is a type of search that basically says, I'm going to go through all of the all right, so essentially linear search is, I want to find a needle inside of a haystack. Here's the needle, and here's the entire haystack. So it's like, if I wanted to look for the letter like B instead of, inside of the linear search, I'm basically saying, is this B? Is this B? Is this B? Is this B? And I go through it until I get to the B, and at that point, I return the index. Uh, I believe that is how this particular algorithm works. So the release zero is just saying, write a method for linear search that takes in two arguments, the object, the thing that you're looking for, and the array that you're searching in. You'll also want to add some driver code, and you want to return the index for the null, the null, nil, none, whatever the equivalent is in each language. With that, I'm going to fork it over. Forking is the act of making a photocopy so that it doesn't live when I push, it doesn't live in Indie Platoon anymore, but it lives on my particular user username. So I'm going to fork it over to JM. Little graphic comes up. And you'll see at the very top left, it says JM linear search forked from Indie Platoon. So I've made a photocopy. I'm going to download it using the clone command. A lot of stuff open here. I'm going to run clear. I'm going to run git clone and then download linear search from the web onto my machine. And if you take a look, there's linear search that I just cloned out. I want to change directory from where I'm at inside of linear search. And you'll notice right at the very end here, I've got, I'm on the master branch. And immediately, most of the time, you want to get into this habit as much as you can. You want to get checkout dash B to a new branch. I'm going to call this John's solution for India. At this point, you can see that I've changed from the master branch into John's solution for India. And I'm going to just start writing some code out. So let's talk about this pseudo code here. Uh, let's take a look at some driver code for us. All right, we're going to just tackle the first one. The global linear search is buying, is basically saying find me every instance of A, and this is the first, this one is saying find me the first <laughs> instance of something. So the idea here, if I had to solve this inside my brain, the, the linear search algorithm is basically saying I'm going to give you one thing. If you find it inside of something to look inside of, return me the index of that particular item that you found. Otherwise, return undefined, nil, none, null. Uh, just return that to me. So my thought process is if I, I mean, obviously I'm a human being, I'm able to see things in, you know, top down. So I can see that, I, I know that inside this container, there's a number three, because I can see everything all at one time. Now, if you were only able to look forward and you weren't able to see everything from the top down, you basically have to say, are you three? Nope. Okay, move on to the next one. Are you three? Nope. Move on to the next one. Are you three? Yes. At that point, return to me the index. When I go down to this number four here, are you four? Are you four? And are you four? No, you reach the end. Otherwise, that, that's how you know it's not inside of it. So my, my thought process is as follows. So number one, create a method called linear search. Linear search takes in a target value that you're looking for and an array of, 
things to look through. I always like to give myself, it's, it's one of those things that you know you write stuff on a to-do list that you know you could immediately cross off just for the, the satisfaction of crossing it off. That's kind of what I do here. All right, I'm going to iterate through the entire um, a, array of things to look through. Keep track of the index of each item and the value of each item. If loop, uh, basically I'm going to do a 2a, step 2a here. If the target value is equal to the value of the item, return the index. Otherwise, you just keep going. And then finally, if you get to the very end, return undefined, null, nil, whatever, because you've reached the end. Right? Yeah. Um, let's just see the quote. But isn't that just isn't that the entire array? You shouldn't find your part of it. The entire array would be always looking through every every element of the list, but it's not just the first instance of it. Sure. So that's what that's. I chose this word iterate through the entire array. So that iterate is another way of saying like do this over and over, which is another way of saying loop through the entire thing. So I am looping through the entire thing. If the target value is equal to the value of the item, return the index. Otherwise, just move on to the next one. And move on to the next one. Move on to the next one. So with this, I've got a framework. I'm going to, uh, oh, there it is. I've got this right over here, and I'm just going to go one by one. So I've got this array to search through. It's equal to a empty array. I've got a thousand items inside of it, and this is what we've got. So we've got exports linear search. It takes in a function, the value that you're looking for, which is that target value, and the array of things you want to search through, which is this second argument here. I want to iterate through the entire array of things to look through. So the way that I choose my words in pseudocode really matters. So I chose, I said array of things to look through is probably going to be a variable. So I just called that the same thing down here. If you really want your if you really want your pseudocode to look a lot like code, you can just I I, would, I just use caps like this called target value and and an array array of stuff. You iterate through the array of stuff. So you can kind of keep track of like, these are the variables I'm going to need over and over again. So I remember when people were doing the Roman numerals challenge, there was a lot of, yeah, you just divide the thing by the thing. I was like, what is the thing and what is the thing? Oh yeah, you just get the evenly divisible thing. I was like, okay, I'm not sure what that means. So it's like, at this point, it's like the more that you spend time doing this pseudocode, the less time you actually have to spend working through like all the variable names. So if you cannot read through your pseudocode really, really easily and can know exactly what's going on, then you're not ready to start coding yet. So maybe we'll change this up. Create a method called linear search. Linear search takes in a target value and an array of stuff. Iterate through the array of stuff. Keep track of the index of each item and the value of each item. If the target value is equal to the value of the item, return the index, return, and then over here. So I've already got some of my variable names inside my pseudocode that I'm thinking through. So just going one by one, create a method called linear search. It's done. Takes in a target value, Maybe let's call this target value. And array of stuff. Not the greatest name, but that's what we chose. We want to iterate through the array of stuff. How do I keep track? How, what kind of loop in JavaScript works to keep track of the index and the value of each item? Tell me what's the Index, I'm just going to say index because we have it there. Yeah, it's the um, same thing. Uh, well, index is less than uh, 
So I've got index equals zero. There's that index that I have right here and the value of each item. So because I know I'm going to need to check against the value oftentimes, I'm just going to say uh, let value equal array of stuff at index. So I've got that. I've got my array of stuff. I've got the iteration. I've got the index of each item and I have the value of each item. Number two A, if the target value if target value is equal to the value, there, there, I, there it is on line nine, return index. So I'm going through it each time and I'm saying, hey, is, uh, are, are you three, are you three, are you three? And once I find it, I'm gonna return the index. Otherwise, it goes through the entire loop. I'm going to return, what is the, what is, what is the null? Uh, is it null? It is null, yeah. Okay, it said undefined. Great. Let us see if this works. Uh, I'm just going to comment this out because I haven't done the linear global search yet. I'm going to make this a little bigger, clear the screen, list everything out, change into the JavaScript. List everything out and run node linear search spec, and I get a bunch of broken crap. Cannot find module shallow equals arrays. Uh, so how do I how do I get rid of that? I could. That is one that is one way to do it. All right, I got a bunch of trues. So the first one does work. Uh, so I, I need, I do need to uh, install a, a second package here in order to get the second one to work. Um, but I think for the sake of time, I'm going to ignore this the second section and just show that we've got this right over here. We're just going to jump over to the Python. And we're essentially just going to go one by one and just translate. Holly, are you just raising, are you just coaching? Same thing, we, we thought through the process and we're just translating. Create a method called linear search, done. Linear search takes in a target value, a value defined, and the array of stuff, array to search through. You're gonna iterate through the array of stuff, keep track of the index and the value of each item. So I don't know how to do this inside of Python. So let's say that, I mean, I'm sure you do, but let's just say Python loop with index. And I'm going to look at, let's just take a look at Stack Overflow because we don't know how to read documentation very well yet. So Stack Overflow is kind of like a online forum where you can ask programming questions. There is other types of whatever, like something overflow, which allows you to ask other place, other types of questions. But essentially what this, how, how to read this particular like documentation is, this is the title of the, this is the title of the question. And the first thing that shows up is the question itself. You can see that there have been 3,052 upvotes, which means 3,052 people also have this exact same question. And people from the community will essentially answer them. And the one that the original person agrees on is the correct answer has a little green check mark. More often than not, the green check mark and the highest number of upvotes is going to be the right answer. But sometimes you can go further down and you can find other solutions. So 647 people said, this is also okay. And underneath there, 120 people have said that this one is okay. But I generally go with the check mark because that is the, uh, that is the agreed upon one. It looks like there is a built-in function called enumerate, which keeps track of the index and the value if you just put enumerate in front of your array. Pardon? It says we have a question. Oh, okay. Did I say that? Ooh. Yes, I did. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Range. Yeah. I could do range. 
I could do a, there's a for loop, there's a, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things. Uh, so I need to iterate through this array of stuff. So I don't know how to iterate inside of JavaScript, inside of Python, how do I do that? For, for right? So I know I need to keep track of the index of each item and the value of each item. So if I don't want to use the enumerate function, I could just create an index equals zero and just keep create my own. So for value in array to search through, if um, if value defined is equal to value return index. And then no matter what, I'm going to index plus equal one. And I think right at the very end, return undefined or none or whatever because you've reached the end. Return, I think it's none. And that's another way to tackle without using the built-in. So as much as possible, I would prefer people to not use these built-in things. Now, obviously, if you're just learning, I, need, I just want to get this done. I just want to learn the language. That's OK. But underneath the hood, somebody created the code that keeps track of the index for you. And that's the thought process that people are looking for in actual interviews. So it's like, can you use the tools, or can you, do you know how to build the tools? I think the analogy I used was they're looking, people are looking for people who know how to build a car rather than people who know how to drive a car. Everyone knows how to drive a car, but not everyone knows how to build a car. And the builders are the ones that they're looking for. I believe this works. Um, let's find out. Clear, list everything. Python, I'm in the wrong folder. How do I change out one directory? Uh, so I want to go up one level. Yep. So I moved up one level, list out everything, go inside of Python, list out everything, and then Python, linear search spec.py, and I get to choose. The power of writing your pseudocode and spending a lot of pseudocode cannot be expressed enough. You really want to spend more time writing that. Because you can kind of see, I just wrote it one time, and I'm able to accentuate it very quickly. Which is, I don't necessarily know all the time how to type the code, but I can Google that stuff in terms of syntax. So I'm ready to push this up, list out everything, get status. Get status. I just want to add in the linear search and the for JS and the linear search for Python. How do I add each one of those things? Get, get add. Just, yeah, just the name of the file. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it in there, and then copy this, paste it in there as well. When I run git status, I get all the files that I've changed compared to the time when I cloned it down. When I run git status again, you'll see that those turn from red into green because I've added them inside of my box. Now I want to put my stamp of approval, get commit dash M, added solutions in Python and JS. Write myself a little message so I know exactly what I did at this particular time. And then I'm going to push to the origin and then specifically John Solution India. So push is upload. If I jump back over here. So linear search. This pops up most of the time for me, but for some people it did not. If it doesn't work for you, just click on three branches or the number of branches. I have two solutions. The one I just pushed was 25 seconds ago. Hit the new pull request. Compare it against India Platoon's master. Great pull request. And there's that pull request that, that everyone should be. Uh, tomorrow we're going to, like, we're just going to have open review time. There's not going to be anything new uh, being taught tomorrow. So if you want me to go super in depth on something, let me know. Uh, but yeah, let's let's stop this video here, and we're going to talk about test streaming development.